Hey guys, welcome to another vlog. I am in such a good mood today because I could start working out my legs again. So if you guys caught my previous vlog or a previous vlog, I had just, you know, minor. It was like these minor little aches and pains and kind of culminated in my knee, like getting some sharp pains when I was deep, doing a deep squat. I took like all the time that I needed. I didn't do any legs. I didn't run. I just walked, you know, to keep the blood flowing, stuff like that. I iced, I heated, I iced, I heated. All the things, it was feeling better, like much, much better, like flexibility. My knee didn't feel inflamed. Anyway, I went back to the gym this morning and did legs for the first time in like just almost two weeks and it was fine. It was totally fine. So I feel so much better. So it just put me in a really good mood. I think I don't realize what a bad mood <laughs> I get into or what a slump I get into when I'm not feeling just normal or just a hundred percent. I really don't feel like myself. I'm sure you all can relate. So anyway, in such a good mood. I also need to thank you guys. I've been meaning to thank you guys in so many of my vlogs and it just keeps slipping my mind. But when I did my 5 a.m. morning routine, my workout edition, I do a shot of apple cider vinegar every morning and, and in the evenings as well. And I was just doing them straight. I just poured it right into my tablespoon, like measuring spoon and took it there. And so many of you commented like, don't do that. It's really bad for your teeth. It's really, and I'm like, oh, well I rinse my mouth right after, but I looked into it a lot more. So many of you were so adamant about it. I was like, it can't just be about my teeth. So I looked into it and yes, you should definitely dilute it. So thank you guys. Again, I've been wanting to thank you guys so much for that little tip, for that piece of advice. And uh, I've been doing it that way ever since. So a big thank you to you guys. I really, really appreciate it. But I thought I would start today's vlog in my closet because in my last PR haul, sorry, I'm looking around for them. I got a couple of new pants from Air and one pair I'm so excited for. They're comfy, they're elastic waisted. The other pair is a pair of jeans, which I think may be too small. So we're gonna try them on right now. Okay, so these are the comfy elastic waisted stretch pants. And I think these are a really nice alternative to my Everlane Dream Pant, which are a little bit thicker than these. In fact, I don't even wear those Everlane Dream Pants once the weather gets warm. Those are definitely pants that I save for uh, travel, like on the airplane, it's great if it's like really overly air conditioned or for the cooler months. So these are, let's see, Pima Cotton Modal Spandex Made in Peru. I got the size medium and I think these are called the High Hopes Pants. I'll link everything down below. I thought uh, the tag for the style name was in here, but they are not. So anyway, I think these will fit fine. We'll just have to see about the length. Let me lower you guys so you can actually see my pants. Yeah, oh, the length is great. Oh my God, that makes me so happy when I don't have to, <laughs> when I don't have to shorten pants. By the way, I am 5'5". Five five. I'm really short-waisted, so they're pulled up pretty high. And yeah, they're just so comfortable. So, so comfortable. I love that they have pockets here. And the Everlane Dream Pant has a seam down the front. These are much simpler and much plainer. So if that appeals to you, or if that was something you didn't like in the Dream Pant, I think you'll really like these air pants. Ooh, so comfy. And they are a flat front, no pleats, no faux pleats, no nothing like that, just the two pockets. And is there a back pocket? No, no back pocket, just the two slash pockets in the front. Ah, so exciting. I may wear these on the plane when I fly out for my cruise. These could be really nice. I just fear wherever I land, if it's supposed to be warm, which it is, I'll be landing in Rome. I just hate the idea of being really hot <laughs> once I land, um, but I guess I can always change quickly. Okay, the jeans, let's see. Okay, so here are the jeans. These are, I believe, the, the Frenchie, yes. Yeah. So the style name is actually in here. So these are the Frenchie, and I think they have some like cool name for the black, but these are basically just the black jeans. And I got a size 28. 
I'm telling you, and I said this when <laughs> I hauled these, I must have been feeling real cocky that day. I have not been a 28 since I was like 30, I think. <laughs> 30 years old anyway uh let's let's try these on they do have a little bit of stretch you know what that's probably why i got the 28 because they do have a little bit of a stretch definitely a little snug but oh i can button them what a surprise let me lower you again i actually really like the way these look wow is that not so difficult when it comes to jeans. Oh, these are great. They have just enough stretch. I think there's like two or 3% spandex. I'll have to look at the fiber content when I take them off. Okay, so typical jean. Belt loops, button, zip, five pocket design here. The two, the third one here, and the two in the back. And I love them. I love how simple they are. And I picked out this style because on the model, who of course is always gonna be taller than me, uh, they looked like just a little bit cropped. And I thought, you know what? I bet they're just gonna hit my ankle and they do. These are like the perfect length and I don't have to get them shortened or cut them, which is so fantastic. I think I need to get this in like every color that they have. So I have like a heavier midsection just for like fit reference. I have a heavier midsection. My thighs are pretty ample. I have, you know, pretty big calves, but I don't have a really large hip to waist ratio. I'm pretty, I have a waist, but I'm pretty straight up and down. I don't have hips that stick out. So, and my butt, I don't know, my butt is average. I don't have a huge butt. I don't have like no butt. My butt's pretty, my butt is pretty average. I feel like these are jeans that I'm comfortable enough in that I could wear all day. It's that little bit of stretch. Oh, let me let me take them off and see how much stretch is in here, just so you guys know. 99% cotton, it's just 1% elastane. I love that, I love that so much. Otherwise they do start to look, like any place they do stretch, they start to look like leggings, and I don't like that. But just enough for some comfort. Yes, I will definitely be getting this style in more colors. So I thought I would try on some of that makeup that I hauled in my last video where I hauled those pants. By the way, I put the um, high hopes, I think that's what these pants are called. So not the jeans, the ones that are like elastic. These feel like pajamas. I am so smitten with these air pants already. I feel like I'm gonna be wearing these a lot. <laughs> these pants and that <laughs> denim shirt. So what I'm most excited and anxious to try is the Lisa Eldridge Seamless Skin Enhancing Tint. So excited. So she sent over shades T6 and T4. So I'm gonna open up T4 here and let's see if that one works. So here's what the packaging looks like. I'm really late to the game, so I'm sure you guys have seen this all over but it's like a little egg shape and then it's flat on one side. It's kind of like her foundation. And, oh, got a little shaker ball. It does sound fairly liquidy. It sounds almost like, um, like a serum foundation. And this top screws off and then there's like a little dropper tip there. I'm going to drop two drops. Let's just see if this shade works. I think it does. Yeah, I think it works. My hand's very <laughs> pale compared to my face, so the fact that it's a little deeper looking on my hand I think is good. Ooh, this has a really nice, almost, almost, not quite, but like oily feeling to it, which I have very dry skin, so this is fantastic. There it is, just sort of spread out. Okay, let's start with this one. I'm just gonna put it Right there, I think that's good. Yeah. I'm sitting in natural light because sometimes I feel like not only is studio lighting, lighting, artificial lighting, but it's so bright that sometimes I feel like my eyes can't adjust properly and see like colors clearly when I'm looking in the mirror. So that's why I'm sitting out here and not in my filming room. Yeah, I think it's a little truer. Um, okay, I've got my Wayne Goss F4 brush. This is his foundation brush, or I should say cream liquid product brush. The I'm gonna need a lot more than <laughs> those two drops, obviously. 
this feels, this feels great on the skin. There's no, there's no fragrance. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. This is beautiful on the skin. Woo. Wow, that is phenomenal. I feel like this was made for me. As you guys know, not into heavy coverage. This has a really nice light coverage and I have very dry skin and it just gives me that little glow there. Isn't that pretty? I know oily skin folks don't necessarily like a glow at all, but I will take it wherever I can get it. This is beautiful. So I have it on this half of my face. I just kind of want you to compare and then nothing on this side. Look how smooth that looks. Oh my gosh. Wow, okay. I am loving this. I think I just need one more drop. So funny, all the makeup I'm trying now until when I leave for my cruise, I feel like I'm just auditioning for my cruise trip. Like, am I gonna pack this one? Which foundation should I pack? This just moved right up to the top of the list. Really, really beautiful. Now, I don't believe this has any SPF. I was just thinking, again, <laughs> with my cruise in mind, I was just thinking the only thing that would probably beat out this one is uh, something that has SPF in it. Not that I don't wear dedicated SPF, but I don't know, I just like it. It makes me feel better to know that I have just a little bit of extra coverage protection in my base. Oh, this is, this is beautiful. This is really beautiful. All right, Lisa Eldridge, this is incredible. Thank you so much for this. I also have the Natasha Denona High Glam Powder Foundation. I'm not a powder foundation wearer, so whenever I use powder foundation, I just kind of use it as a setting powder, just to see how it would work that way. I know powder foundations get very, very popular in the warmer months, but again, because my skin is so dry, I, I just it just doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel good. There's some, like the La Mer Powder Foundation, it's not bad. It definitely is like best in class, but in general, I just don't, I just don't wear powder foundations. So I'm not gonna be testing it out this way. Uh, so she sent me a whole bunch of shades, which I'm so thankful for, but I'm gonna use N2. That seems to be the right shade for me. And I'm just gonna use this lightly just to kind of set down uh, the Lisa Eldridge. Not that I feel like it needs it, by the way. I think on a normal day, you guys have probably noticed, I don't use that much powder to set down my foundations anymore. My skin's just getting, you know, drier and drier <laughs> the older I get. So I don't actually use like a setting powder that often. However, come summertime, it definitely becomes much more a part of my routine. I cannot stop staring at my skin after putting that Lisa Eldridge tint on. It's so good. It's so good, okay. <laughs> wow. All right, I just grabbed my master face brush from Sonia G to use with this Natasha Denona. The Natasha Denona does come with a sponge, but I do think that is better if you want uh, more coverage, a little bit of like a heavier application of the powder, which again, not really my thing. Sorry, I have a brush hair tickling me right there. So I'm using this, uh, it's, it's a fluffy brush, but it's fairly dense. So I do think I'm gonna be picking up quite a bit of powder. Anyway, let's just go right in, just picking up that amount there. And I'll start right on my cheeks here. And press over my eye and forehead. and just get it on my nose. Yeah, it definitely brings the shine down, so no powder and powder. It definitely look, it definitely feels matter. It doesn't feel uh, dry though. You know how some powders kind of feel, uh, they feel kind of chalky? This doesn't have that feeling at all. It's actually very nice. I have to say, you know, that little teensy bit of extra coverage that the powder gives this side of my face is, is quite nice. <laughs> Definitely can use it, right? Starting on my cheeks, eyes. 
Wow, what a combination. Lisa Eldridge and Natasha Denona. I have to say, not to sound obnoxious, but I feel like my skin looks pretty, pretty good right now. Wow. All right. I like this because I was thinking, you know, on my crew, <laughs> back to my cruise, Michelle just shut up about this damn cruise, um, but it's gonna be quite humid and I think I will want a little bit of uh, powder. So that now is in contention for my makeup travel bag. So next, uh, RMS Beauty sent me their new Redimension Hydro Bronzer. Now, you guys know how much I love their blush. I even have one just sitting out here, so I'll use it, the Mai Tai blush. So same line, same idea. I believe it's the same formula, but we have some bronzer shades. So this one is Beach Walk Betty. I believe there's four different shades and this one seemed to be the coolest shade. Definitely not the lightest, but the coolest. And sometimes that just works better for me. So I am gonna use, I need to clean this off though. I've got my uh, Fan L, the large fan brush from Sonia G, but you can see. It is very, very well loved. So I'm just gonna use my Refresh brush cleaner here. So I have to say, I was a little surprised that I did not see RMS Beauty at Sephora anymore. Have you guys noticed that? I used to get all my RMS Beauty there. Anyway, they're not there anymore, but um, I did find them at Credo. And of course they have their own website, but yeah, I was a little, I was a little surprised, especially after the success of their blushes because I think, yeah, I think I got all of their blushes at Sephora as well. All right, nice and clean. Now let me go into Beach Walk Betty. And this is a baked gel powder formula. So I do like using a denser brush, a brush that you know that you have in your collection that you know picks up a lot of product or product very easily. Uh, that's what I would opt for. What a gorgeous shade. It has that little bit of red in the undertone there. I think I swatched this for you during the PR haul, but in my kitchen, my lighting is really warm and I was looking at the footage, you know, while I was editing and I'm like, there's a lot more red in it. So anyway, this uh, depiction of it, I think is much more accurate. What a great tone. I love it. It really makes me look like I've had some sun and it's settled in. That's what that red undertone does, at least for my skin tone. It just makes me look like I've had sun. Not like I just was sitting out in the sun, but like I've had sun. All right, well, my list for my cruise is getting easier and easier <laughs> to make because I think I'm gonna be bringing all three of the things that I've tried so far. Next, we have the new blushes from Pat McGrath. So uh, the blush formula is not new, but she came out with four new shades which I did uh, swatch for you in the PR haul. So I'm trying to figure out which one to use. So I'm gonna use two different ones, two that I think you, sh you guys are probably most interested in. So this one is Paradise Peony. So it's just a really pretty uh, pink with a little bit of warmth to it. And then this one is Alluring Nude, which is similar, but more nude, cooler toned. So the Alluring Nude, let's put that on over here. So there is Alluring Nude. It's very pretty and I love that sheen that the balm has. Can you see it? Every time I looked in the monitor, I'm like, am I not like blending this out properly? But it's actually the sheen that I'm seeing. Ooh, that's very pretty. So that's Alluring Nude. And then let's try this uh, peony color, Paradise Peony. Let's try that over here. So there's Paradise Peony. Yeah, a little brighter. There's a little bit more heat there. Gorgeous. Both are really, really pretty. So Paradise Peony, Alluring Nude. Gorgeous. I love these brush sticks from Pat McGrath. They're great. And then Addiction Tokyo sent me their latest limited edition collection. It is called Out of Your Shell. And there's two eyeshadow quads included in this little collection. So here's what the packaging looks like. Gorgeous, so gorgeous. This, I don't know if you can see, it has like a, almost like a shell-like finish. What, what's like, almost like Mother of Pearl 
finish on there and look at these shades oh my goodness so this one is 101 amethyst c and the other quad is 102 sunrise tide so this has warmer shades i think i'm gonna go with 101 i think that's the mood that i'm in uh, but i just skipped right over my brows and jones road actually sent me a brow pencil yeah brow pencil let's see what shade this is in gray which is perfect sounding let's see so here's what their brow pencil looks like it's like a chubby pencil and here's the gray color let's do a little swatch that was a hard swatch so that is the gray all right let's let's try this i'm always bitching about how <laughs> Brow pencils are too warm. Well, now I have gray. All right. It is a very, very hard and lightly pigmented pencil. So it's perfect for brows. I'm in love with this gray. Not surprised. I always feel a little weird not running a spoolie through. There's no spoolie at this end. I wish there was maybe one in the cap or something, but I always feel like I should, I don't know, be brushing my brows out after I do that. But I do have the Benefit 24 hour brow setter. Yeah, this is the clear one. I also have the fluff up brow wax, but I think I'm gonna go with the 24 hour brow setter today. And I think this will make me feel better. Yeah, cause it's got this little comb. <laughs> All right, what do we think? I really like the gray. I really, really like the gray. All right, and I like the texture of that pencil. Mistake proof, which is what we need for, <laughs> for brows. That's great. All right, now for eyeshadow. We've got that Amethyst C, and gosh, beautiful. All of these are so beautiful. They're so ethereal. This is so kind of quintessential Japanese makeup. It's so light, it's so pretty. I'm gonna use my Sonia G T4 brush and I'm gonna go into the taupe shade. And all of these shades have a little something to them. None of them are matte. The taupe shade is satin and the rest seem to have uh, like a metallic glint to it or like little um, micro glitters. God, I almost forgot that word. <laughs> Let's start with this taupe. Well, that's like a perfect Michelle color. Love that. Oh, I love that. Okay, I'm gonna use a larger flat shader brush, this T5 from Sonia G. And I'm gonna go into this light pinky purple shade up here. It's so pretty. It's so, it's like fairy makeup. <laughs> it's so light, it's like a little, sparkle like a magic wand applied my eyeshadow that's what it looks like i really hope we start talking about addiction tokyo more i kind of fell in love with them i think i found them over instagram and beauty gypsy on instagram she was so sweet one holiday season she sent me a few goodies and one was this addiction tokyo palette fell in love immediately and then was talking to Sonia G about it. And then when I met Sonia G, she had brought me something from Addiction Tokyo because at that time you couldn't get it in the States. And then when I went to Japan in 2019, I was like, I have to get something of my own. So I got this pre-made palette because you can make custom palettes. But I was in Japan, I don't know Japanese, and you know there was a lot of pointing or whatever. So I just got one of their pre-made um, palettes and it's, I still have it. It's gorgeous. I like just absolutely adore that. I just treasure it. So anyway, they're now available in the U.S. and I'm so excited. Look how pretty those shadows are. I'm so excited. And they're really known for their eyeshadows. So they have these single eyeshadows that are gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. You can get a palette, put the shadows in there, make your own like little palette. Oh my God. It, they're stunning. They're absolutely stunning. I am going to curl my lashes. Forgot what I was doing for a second there. Curl my lashes. Do I have a new mascara? Oh, I do, from Addiction Tokyo. This is their mascara, Intense Lashes. Uh, oh, Sea of Sage. Did I wanna do a color mascara? Or I should say, I mean, all mascaras have color, but uh, uh, an untraditional <laughs> color mascara. I guess there are clear mascaras, aren't there? Do you remember those clear mascaras? 
Do they even make those anymore? I remember that was a thing. They're like, oh, even clear mascaras will emphasize your lashes. I was like, seems a little bit like Emperor's New Clothing. All right, this is Addiction Tokyo. So this is actually not from this limited edition collection, this shell collection. This is from Unknown Familiar, which I believe was a collection before. I think this is still available. So Sea of Sage 102 is this shade, and it's a sage color, which you guys know I love. I just don't know if I'm gonna love it as a mascara, but let's try it out. I'm not sure you can even really see it. Let me try and get a close-up look. Oh, a little bit, huh. What do you guys think? I think that's actually pretty fun because only up close will you see just a slight hint of the green. I think way back in the day, Tom Ford had a bunch of like electric colored mascaras and the green was almost like a turquoise. Am I remembering that correctly? Or they just had like a turquoise? Anyway, that was like, it was a little too much. This is really nice. Huh, okay, I'm glad I tried that. I was a little, I was a little hesitant there, but I'm glad I tried that. All right, for eyeliner, um, Isam sent me their uh, newly reimagined, ma remastered, excuse me, remastered eye pencils, and uh, they redid their eye pencils and their lip pencils. So the colors are a little bit different, and the formula is different. The formula is cleaner. So I think for today, I'm just going to use just a regular eyeliner color. Let's see what they got. Brown shade. So this one is brown and citrine. So the accompanying shade to the deep shade is usually something um, a little bit brighter, a little bit more metallic. It'll be great for like the waterline, the lower waterline. So I'm gonna use the brown up top here and really get underneath my lashes like so. And then I'm gonna use this citrine side, which is uh, like a champagne gold shade and let's put this in my waterline here just to brighten it up oh that's pretty oh i like that i don't usually do anything too funky in my waterline but when i do i just love it especially when it works so that's brown and citrine such a great duo and then lisa eldridge sent me um one of her lip liners this is in 1n i am like obsessed with this color it's the perfect grungy lip color, is it not? Oh my God, I've been so, so excited to try this on. I'm just gonna soften it up a bit. And I thought it would be a good match for this Lawless Forget the Filler Lip Plumper in Maple Sugar. I always wanna say maple syrup, it's maple sugar, but this is the shade. Is that not the most perfect pairing? So let's try it out. Look at that grungy lip. If this was like a matte situation, I would totally be channeling the 90s right now. My God, this foundation is amazing. Amazing. So anyway, that is basically trying on uh, all the new makeup and new pants that I've gotten recently. Um, all the links will be down below in my description box. If you're interested in any of these products, let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.